Hello everybody, this is War Story Video Vlog. I am at Grossmering Military Antique Show. And uh, here is uh, Helmut Weitzer uh, stand. And uh, here is Helmut Weitzer. Hello everybody. Please tell me about most interesting items uh, from your table. For example, about uh, best helmet, sword, and maybe edged weapon. All right, will do. My pleasure. We have a table full of merchandise. In this moment, we have many very new items. We could just purchase a giant collection with over 60 uniforms from World War II. Um, some of them are extremely rare. I will show you one. Mm -hmm. This is something you don't see every day. It is a Panzer black wrapper for an officer, an NCO candidate. He was serving in the famous Panzer Division Groß Deutschland, but he was commanded to the Führer Hauptquartier to be the protection of the Wolfschanze. And you see, it's one of the very few ones with two cuff titles. One is Groß Deutschland and the other one is Führer Hauptquartier. And you see also the white piping, which was only used for the Großdeutschland units that were protecting the, the Führer headquarter. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the first one in many, many years that, that I've seen. It was coming more or less direct from a private household. Mm. So extremely rare. The, when did you buy it? Um, we have collected the entire collection uh, last week on Tuesday. Oh, really? It's so really it's very fresh, fresh, yes. fresh material. Also, which a piece that, that just came in this week is the group here from this Nightcross winner. He was the a squadron leader of the Kampfgeschwader 26 during the war. It was It's coming with all the medals and decorations, all the citations. And after the war, that is, that is him during the war, being a member of the Air Force. And after the war in the West German Army, he changed from Air Force to the Navy and became a Navy pilot. And what is really nice, the portrait photograph is showing him with his post-war Knight's Cross and the post-war medal bar that you see here. And he's wearing his Knight's Cross together with an American naval pilot wing, which he got awarded being a NATO officer. So, okay, so historical. Yes, and we could purchase this in two groups from the grandson and from the sun, mm -hmm. and all came together in one day. So a really okay, interesting it's, story. It's full dynasty. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's, in this completeness, it's an exception that everything is still there. Mm -hmm. And uh, is this one uh, not post-war? No, no, this is, was actually his, the awarded Knight's Cross. This is a Klein and Quenzer piece, so later on marked 65, but this is one of the very first productions of Klein and Quenzer. And at that time, still only silver hallmark, but no 65, that came a little bit later. But this is actually the cross, what the uh, soldier was wearing on this very photograph. So this is this cross. It's oh, really interesting. Yep. And, uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, how much is it? How much is uh, the full group? The whole, so the whole group, group is 25,000 euros. 25,000 euros. And uh, there is a... Yeah, that's interesting. It's a Spanish cross in gold. So during, during the Civil War, the Spanish Civil War, he was flying with a German uh, Legion Condor in Spain. And he was quite successful. He got the Military Bravery Medal. And this is from Spain. This is the Spanish commemorative medal after the war um, finished. And this here was his Spanian cross in gold. You see, after the war, the veteran has destroyed the swastika in the center, but he forgot the, to remove the swastika from the eagles. Mm -hmm. So, um, just a curiosity. And this here is the citation for this medal. Original document. For... Original documents. Mm -hmm. And the original documents for the Spanish decorations are these colorful ones here. That's very interesting. And I'd like uh, metal bars because uh, a lot of history um, on small pieces. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. A story like this, the, the group like this is telling the whole history, how he was fighting, where he was stationed, the, his commanders who signed the documents. Mm -hmm. so it's a very nice story and you can do a lot of research. Okay, very interesting. And uh, what about your favorite helmet here on display? A lot of helmets here and yeah. head, headgear. Um... I show you a very special one, one moment. Okay. I don't know if it is the most expensive helmet here on the table, but for sure one of the rarest. Uh, this is an imperial helmet made around 1905, 1910. And the officer was one of our colonial officers in East Africa. In all the years, I'm in business now for over 30 years, I think this is just the second helmet that I could ever find. Mm -hmm. So this is something really extremely rare. For sure not everybody's uh, interest, uh, but uh, for sure, something very historical, what most of the collectors have never seen before. Mm -hmm. And a very important item for uh, collectors. For, for somebody who's collecting the colonies, for sure, very... And, and helmets. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll show you one more piece. Let's take a visor hat. This is something which might be also interesting for uh, the Russian collector world. This is a visor hat for a very high-ranking government official who was in the occupied territories, especially White Russia and Ukraine, mm -hmm. the so-called Reichsministerium Besetzte Ostgebiete, the Ministry for the Occupied Eastern Territories. These were responsible for many horrible parts of the German history during World War II. Mm -hmm. And his rank is comparable with a general. And in just by coincidence, yesterday. And, um, how many? How many generals in of? Only a handful. This is the first one I've ever encountered. Mm -hmm. It's my very first one. Mm -hmm. And as in comparison, you see over there. Mm -hmm. This is the same visor head, all everything in silver, for a regular officer. So mm -hmm. here you have the general, and here one of his normal officers could have been commanded to Poland, Ukraine, White Rutania, um, Belarus, mm -hmm. everywhere there. And um, for example, how much? Uh, this visor hat here is uh, 4,500 euros, mm -hmm. very nice condition. And the other one, which was actually an American war trophy, I found it in February at the SOS show in Louisville, that one is 8,500. Thank you. And uh, could you explain about uh, one edged weapon on uh, your opinion, what is the With best pleasure. on here? Yes, yeah. I will show you one. Mm -hmm. On the first look, these two look like twins. Both were Kriegsmarine Deluxe Navy officer daggers. Um, but they are actually not twins. They were coming from a shop in Lübeck at the Baltic Sea. And these were the display pieces of a dagger shop and were found in the 1970s hidden behind a wall, never issued. The grips are both in ivory. They look like twins, but they are not. And when you look at the different designs, everything was handcrafted. And when you have an idea how many hours it takes to chisel the scabbards, mm -hmm. um, then you get an idea that during the war, when an officer wanted to purchase one of these deluxe daggers, it might have cost him maybe three months salaries. Three months salaries. And um, one dagger, just a uh, regular WKC? A regular, a regular naval dagger uh, today starts at six, seven hundred euros. Yes, and uh, in, in that time? At that time, um, a, it would be approximately something between 20 and 25 Reismarks. So that would be the half of the salary of a little lieutenant. Ha ah, really? Mm -hmm. Half of a uh, month. His monthly income. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. But these here were way more at the time. Ivory was very expensive at the time. Mm -hmm. And in this quality, that these were exceptional. And still today, they are exceptional. Um, we're talking about 15,000 per piece. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Especially this design and here, I've never seen before. And you said uh, those items found in Lübeck? In Lübeck, in a, in, the, in a former shop which was cleaned out, they, after the war they were selling knives and scissors, mm -hmm. and during the war, for sure, also military daggers. 
and I was told in total they had five different as a wall decoration, mm -hmm. and these two we have received. Okay, that's interesting. And yep. uh, when did you? Um, uh, this one actually had it's not even an inventory number. That one came this Monday, and the other one I have already for about three weeks, coming from the same source. Wow. How is this show for you? Maybe you found something extraordinary for to put it on your private collection or uh, merchandise? Uh, unfortunately for my private collection, I didn't find anything, mm -hmm. um, but it is also very difficult. I understand. Um, we have purchased one group, which is uh, very unusual, um, which belonged to a Panzer officer. And you must imagine in the beginning, this person was a paymaster. And not a really a war hero mm -hmm. and you have a very nice picture from him as a young uh, lieutenant being a paymaster so administrative mm -hmm. and in the end of the war he signed up to become a panzer commander here you have his photograph from 1944 and you see his unit he was at a elite uniform an elite unit of the panzer recognition and here is this overseas hat with the unit, you see the mm. tank, reconnaissance tank, with the L for Lea, Panzer Lea. This is something I've never ever seen before. And, this, and he received all his medals in the last battles. He was a participant of the uh, Battle, of the, uh, Battle of the Bulge, what we call the Ardennen Offensive, 1944, mm. Christmas. And he was fighting at the Ardennes and then he was defending on the German ground. He was in Krefeld and uh, München Gladbach. And this is really interesting that he was a soldier of the very last weeks and months of World War II. Mm -hmm. And that the pieces survived. We have received beside his soul book in his overseas cap also a bundle of um, his photographs and okay. some are actually showing him moment. I hope I can find it now with this hat on. Thank you for your story, Helmut. And, uh, Always a pleasure. Yeah, it was very interesting. And um, you live in today and... Uh, no, no we, are flying, uh, we are flying home tomorrow. And a uh, safe trip home. Thank safe, you very much. Safe trip home to Gamble. Okay, thank you. I also tell goodbye to my audience. If you enjoy, give me your likes. Uh, let me know which item you like most among Helmut talked about. Thank you for watching till the end. I wish you good evening and see you next videos.